Right, here's the Zimbabwe team today. Shah and Fado open the batting. Pycroft, Houghton, Waller, Campbell, Butchart, the all-rounder. Brandis, the opening bowler. Burmis, the, the seamer. Pr uh, John Tricos, the off-spinner. And Kevin Jew is the other seam bowler. The Indian team today, Jadija and Shrikanth, Azruddin, Kambli, Tendulkar, Mandraker is, is their specialist batting lineup. Kapil Dev, the all-rounder. Prabhaka, the all-rounder. Kiran Moro, the wicketkeeper. Srinath, the pace bowler. And Venkat Tapati, Raju is the left-arm spinner. Too. So, Edo Brandis to open up bowling to this man, Chris Shrikant. Who's had really a most disappointing World Cup and um, was once such a marvellous player. First ball of the game. And not a bad one either. So winning the toss, India, and electing to bat, of course, uh, different from a few years ago when in these conditions you would have immediately bowled, but the rules have changed. And the first runs of the innings down to two. Oh, he slipped over. Dear me. And that shows how wet it is down there. And it's gone through for four. So for a loud appeal. And umpire Julius Bulchins from Sri Lanka, unimpressed. I thought that looked a jolly good shout. I wonder if he got a nick on it. It certainly was. I thought that looked plumb, and I maybe the umpire felt that he'd got an inside edge on it. it but it looked bad. to me to be absolutely plumb. It wasn't bad, was it? Goodness me, he wasn't even interested, was he? Oh, over the top, big hit, and that is six. Superb hit. Chris Shrikanth. Not a big crowd here, but uh, pretty obvious who they're supporting. Well, Campbell Dev that was, and it was a marvellous stroke. Just like Ian Sorry, Botham, watch it, I say a marvellous stroke, it was a bit of a slogger rule, but he's a powerful player, and he hit it away wide, over wide mid-on. Oh, he slashes it, that one stands up, crashes it through the covers. Possibly could have gone anywhere, but it went in the right place, and it raced away for four. That was the street count of old, it was a little over-pitched, he hit it, it was almost a slice drive, but he hit it so well. Golly, that was a lovely shot. Yes, it was. He just stood up, didn't he? He just stood tall on it, and bang. Capital Dev. Oh, loud appeal. He's out. He's gone. Julius Bulchins with the finger high says, Capital Dev, you're out. So Zimbabwe have struck. The first Indian wicket has fallen. Capital Dev. Well, that was a low pull toss. It hit him on the ankle. Uh, he was hitting across the line, trying to work it away to leg. Hit him abs and absolutely plumb. He was in line with middle stump, and there was not the least shadow of doubt about that. It would have knocked stump back, stump vision about two feet back or two yards back to the keeper. It certainly would have. So, India 23 for one. For Kevin Dewars, tried digging it out, Shrikanth. Didn't really time it that well, but he's got runs. They'll come back for two. And I think that's all they'll get. He has a look for the third, but no. So, India not quite starting as they might have with this uh, shortened game. Kapil Dev sent in to get things underway. He's gone. And Shrikanth not really timing it as well as he might. Shrikanth hooking and playing it very well indeed. And it is going to be four runs. Jew has made a big effort sprinting around the boundary but it was well struck by Shrikant. Yes, we saw a shorter one earlier to Shrikant, and he looked to defend it, but now he's decided if it goes in short that the bounce here is high enough, and he's into that shot very quickly. A bit of a blink there, I noticed, a wince as he played it, but it wasn't that high, and very efficiently put away behind square for four. Well, not a particularly well-timed stroke. He looked as though he was launching into a big cover drive, but he squirted it away for a couple. Down back with a point has Azuruddin. Oh, that's a great shot. He really hit that one, Azuruddin, and there was no doubt about where that was heading. Four runs. Yes, let's watch his feet here. He just basically stood where he was, launched at it. It was so full and straight that he really only needed to bring the bat through. And it was hit so quickly, this actually goes back in the air, which I hadn't noticed earlier. It did go back in the air and just sticking out a hand here. 
Nicely played by Azzurradeen. Beautifully struck off the back foot. The ball rather labouring to the boundary on the slow outfield, but it gets there, and that's four to the Indian captain. Yeah, good shot here. It was a little wide of him, but he was certainly on top of it. Clipped it through the offside and didn't bother to move. Azra Dean now on 12, India 43 for one. Well, he might have got a little nick on that. Yes, he did. Went to play it on the leg side. A little nick. And there never seemed much doubt about it. They call on the umpire, though, to make the decision. And away goes Azra Dean. Yes, umpire Bulchins just waited a little there. But let's watch short outside the off stump. And just trying to pull it from there. Must have got a little bottom edge. And a sneaky look at the umpire there, I suggest. <laughs> so I think he knew he was on his way. And the second wicket down now for India, 43 for two. Oh, beautiful shot. The fieldsman got a bad bounce, but it was beautifully struck by Tendulkar. Four runs. Uh, we have some seats watching as well. And this shot here was certainly clipped. And watch how it bounces and almost hits cover on the head. He went down for it, almost to his peril. Oh, <laughs> in fact, it bounced at least two feet over the top of his head. That's nicely played too into the gap. Brandis has a big chase. I think he can give it up. Beautifully timed by Tendulkar. That's four runs, and up comes the 50 for India. They're 52 for two at the end of 10 overs. Swung away by Srikant. There is a man down there. And you've got to get uh, fairly firm footing. And Dewars uh, looked a little uncomfortable lighting that one up, but he got it in the end. And one run for Srikant. Very overcast here, quite threatening in fact. It's remarkable we haven't had any rain for a couple of hours in Hamilton. The forecast suggests that it was going to rain most of the afternoon. Let's hope not anyway. And that's a nice shot. Down towards third man. Butchart saves well. Very good fielding indeed, under difficult and trying conditions. And Ian Butchart did very well indeed. Three can over the top, big hit. And uh, bouncing once and into the fence for four. Three can't uh, prefers to hit it over mid-off or straighter than that, but on this occasion, just fetching it a little bit. And it goes over long on. Just outside off stump and getting the body weight coming forward into it and one bounce. Oh, he's after that. What a shot. Magnificent stroke. Four runs. Yes, I can't understand the field placement here. He hasn't got an offside sweeper. He's still got a gully in. And that was width. And didn't he cream it? And Dolka pulls on the onside. That'll be four more. This is a very good over for India. Yes, short. And he leapt into that shot. Fairly loose bowling here. Ten Dolka managed to get it more towards mid-wicket than square. Shrikant's bowl. Burmester has his second success. And Shrikant after a very aggressive approach is bowled by Burmester for 32 it's 69 for three well that's Burmester's second one day international wicket almost a Yorker and this got right through Srikanth and Burmester he is delighted and he's bowled quite well too for Zimbabwe well they put the pressure on but of course India know that they've only got 32 overs they've used up 12 of them and it's now 69 for three as Chris Srikanth leaves An edge there, he didn't know much about it at all. Yeah, that's four. But it's going to bring him four. Really, that was a lovely ball from Burmester, and he can well rue his misfortune because a little finer, and Andy Flower might have made the catch. Well, certainly a moral victory here to the bowler, but unfortunately, in one day cricket, very rarely do you have slip, certainly at this stage of the innings, and that's gone, that's rocketed to the boundary. And that's one of the reasons because he plays strokes like that all around the park. Oh, 
that's a bad piece of fielding. Well, a big bonus for Tendulka in India there. I mean, really, it's elementary <laughs> to get some part of the body behind the ball. I mean, that's gone right through the gate, isn't it? Down the ground, Mandraka goes, and that's a very good shot. There's no one back there protecting it long on. And Mandraka gets his first runs and a boundary and a very good one. It's the end of the over. It's 85 for three now. 15 overs completed. And that's a lovely shot. That's going to beat Dewars, is it? Oh, no, he did it. It's well fielded. Very well fielded, but it's still three runs. But that's very good commitment in the field because that looked like four. his first ball just clipped away behind square they'll get one at least and that's all they'll get is Andy Pycroft so there's the hundred the Indian hundred Madraka plays it beautifully and the fieldsman fell over there was a man out at long off who was going to make some ground towards the ball I doubt whether he had much chance anyway and Mandraka hits a straight four and the end of the over 131 for three that's 23 gone now as Ali Shah bowls, this is high in the air, he should be okay, yes he is, and gets four runs. Good hit by Tendalka. Yes, hitting across it and gets a bit of a top edge, but really went after this one. Not getting quite hold of it, and it was a steepler, but falling harmlessly between the two boundary fielders. Goes again, big hit here. This could be his 50, and it's six runs. And Tendulka bins up his 50 with a six. Yes, freeing his arms and looking to whack it over mid on. It's certainly about a wedge, I would have suggested. But the wedge went uh, at least 65 metres and just lobbed over the boundary. Just made it over as you could see, and so Sashin Tendalka goes to 52. And we see there the wagon wheel, we're doing it all from one end to make it, uh, to simplify it for you. Bang, four more, 18 off the over so far. I wonder what the message was. <laughs> was it to try and hit every ball to the boundary for four? We just watched the replay here. See, width didn't get hold of it actually, only just got it over mid on. But mid on is up and he hit it to the vacant spot. He would have known that that was his target. Tendoka launches into this one. That's four. Tremendous timing. Well, that's the one of the gaps I mentioned over mid wicket. And he just waited for this. Just watch how he pauses. He got across there and fetched it. It was fairly low down, below waist high. He knew the gap was there. He had it in his mind. And there was only one place that was going. Now Mandraka goes for the big hit. Could be caught. And that's well held. Good catch by Kevin Dewars. And away goes Mandraka. It's 168 for four. Trying to get it over extra cover, I fancy, not able to do that. And the way that this is caught is interesting. He's come down, given himself some room, and watch how he tries to take it reverse cup, and then the ball is so low he has to catch it in an orthodox manner. So he almost cocked it up there, but however, the Indians have lost their fourth wicket at 168. Well, again, Tricos has bowled this over very well indeed. Four balls gone, only three runs scored. Down he goes, and uh, what's the story here? Is he stumped? He's wandering off. Or was he bowled? Let's have a look. Pitching just outside off. Just brushed the off stump, didn't it? Well, I think it was bowled without question. Bale comes off before uh, the ball sort of rebounds back. So he's gone, bold. So away goes Campbell. One run he got, 170 for five. Here's Wits 
very good running between the wickets and of course the pressure is on with the, just uh, a couple of overs to go they've virtually got to run for everything at the very least it's a runner ball but of course those boundaries have still got to come Jedidah's down the ground too he might be caught is he? Ali Shah has got a, a marvellous catch by Ali Shah it looks for a moment as if it might not quite have carried but to compensate Shah pushed himself forward and Jadija has gone, caught by Shah, bowled by Trikos for six. It's 182 for six now. Well, this is Trikos' third wicket. He's deserved it. He's bowled very well, but uh, a bit of loft in there. That's a very good diving catch, low down. It might be the one of Rod Latham uh, dismissing one of the Australians just a, a week or so ago. Jeff Marsh. That's right. And so that's the sixth Indian wicket down, 182 for six in the 30th over. Tendalka. <laughs> be out this time because Campbell's coming in for it. Will he get it? He does. The marvellous innings of Sachin Tendulk is over. Caught by Campbell out of backward point from the bowling of Burmester and India now are 184 for 7 in the 31st over. Well, a bit of an inside-out shot here, just trying to squeeze it, really. Uh, I'm pretty sure to hit it around mid-on, but a bit of bottom hand screwing it around. That's a very well-judged catch, too. And Burmester picks up his third wicket for 30. And Tindalka's innings has come to an end. 81 and 77 deliveries, 184 for 7 in the 31st. edges goes through to the boundary. Well that's probably why three nats out there because if you look to drive and get an edge I mean, no one's going to stop that. Obviously no slip. Flower making a valiant attempt of course but the third man is very very wide so that's always going to go for four but three nats he can hit sixes. Well India will be looking for at least ten and they get one of them anyway. Five balls remain, 191 for seven. And I think Zimbabwe would be quite happy to have restricted India to round about this score, or 200, as we anticipate that they will get. And they will feel with 33 overs that they're in with a real chance. And uh, certainly India are going to have to bowl and feel quite well. There's no doubt that Houghton is a key batsman there for Zimbabwe, and Waller and Flower and these blokes. They do have players who can uh, get some useful scores. Well, he gives himself some room and he gets over the top and does pretty well. It won't run. Well, that's a typical Moray shot, giving himself a little bit of room. He's done that to a number of bowlers around the world. Look at that, gives himself a lot of room to go through the offside. And that's because the mid-off and the cover are up. And if he can get over or through that field, then Nambiru is going to race away to the boundary for four. So that's where he's likely to go. Same thing, Brandis chases him and does pretty well. It was quicker too. Yes, it was well bowled. And of course, had Moray stood his ground, that ball would have gone down the leg side and probably been called a wide. But uh, very good bowling and uh, very intelligent bowling too because if the batsman does move, then the bowler has no alternative really but to follow him. There's always the danger, of course, that if you bowl at the stumps, the batsman's given himself enough room to free his arms and miscue it or try and hit it through that offside. So it's well bowled. So Moray stood his ground that time, flicked him over mid-wicket. Campbell should get it. So just two balls remaining. And India have made 195 for seven. Well, only five runs have come off this over, and if Brandis can keep it to another, to another two or three, then I think he's bowled it uh, particularly well. Wise goes high, it's a beautiful That's shot. That's over the top of Campbell, it's over the top of the boundary, and there's the 200 for India. And Moray's happy with that too, because once it went over the boundary, he waved to his uh, fellow supporters, fellow players in the stand. Really, he did hit that nicely. Just picked it up, got under it, well-timed, and that cleared the boundary quite easily. And so that makes an expensive over now. Still a ball to go, the last one. 11, overs ta 11 runs taken, and Moray cracks him to backward point. Waller's there, will they come back for the second order? Missfield will let that. 
So the innings is over. 32 overs we've had. And India have used up the allotted overs with Kieran Moray having taken 13 from the last over by Edo Brandis. And it's 203 for 7. So India winning the toss, batting in 32 overs, have made 203 for 7 wickets. Well batted India, 203 for 7 and 32 highly entertaining innings, uh, 32 highly entertaining overs. And Sachin Tendulkar, the 18-year-old, the star of the show for the Indian team, 81 he made from 77 deliveries, a partnership of 99 he had with Sanjay Mandraka, who was runner ball for 34. Shrikan hit well at the top of the order, and Karen Moray took India over the 200 with that wonderful six over backward square legs. So Moray 15 not out, 203 for seven in 32 overs. Let's take a look at the Zimbabwean bowling figures now. And there was one wicket for Ido Brandis, but he was pretty expensive, 13 coming from his last over. Kevin Jewers couldn't contain the Indian players. Mark Burmester did a little better, six and over, three for uh, 36 from six for him. Ali Shah none for 38, and probably Zimbabwe's best bowler today was John Trakos, 3 for 35 from his six overs. Almost set to go then in the Zimbabwe innings, and it's Ali Shah, the left-hander, facing Kapil Dev. Well. So this should be a fascinating 32 overs from Zimbabwe. They certainly showed in the early stages of their innings the other day that they can push it. They just got a little behind in the end against New Zealand, and... Uh, and they unfolded quite dramatically, but they looked quite good early on. Yes. Nicely played here by Shah. He's going to get a couple. Remember, the fielding restrictions don't come off until the end of nine overs, and so only two players allowed out. Single here, taken by... Andy Flower, he's going to look for a second, and he left the stretch, and he does stretch. The throw wasn't that flash anyway. Well, Prabhaka started another over, and his most fortuitous shot by Ali Shah. It's got him four runs. It was a French cut, and he gets four for it. Yes, the inside edge, under edge cut, just defeating the, the stumps there. He's just trying to slash it off the front foot square on the offside and very fortunate indeed to pick up four runs. Yeah. That's a nice looking shot. That's beautifully played. That's four runs. He's all after looking all at sea for a while there. We see a top shot this time from Ali Shah. Certainly wide and just smashed it forward a point. Yeah. Pleasant looking drive for one run by Shah. Oh, hit the stumps. Not out. Lovely throw. End of the over, 20 without loss. Oh, well, this one's going down to the fence. This will be four leg buyers, I think. It really flew. And let's have a look and see what the umpire's got to say. Yes, four leg buyers. Apple never appealed. Yes, well, it looked like a good shout uh, live. Oh. Hmm. It's fairly adjacent, wasn't it? It may have been slightly high, but certainly I think the batsman on this occasion got the benefit of the any doubt the was. Well, there he's giving away four, although it might have just come from the pads of Flower. Yes, it was a leg by. But valuable runs for Zimbabwe. They have to put the pressure on right now. Over the top of backward square. I don't think they'll get to that. No, they don't. No chance for Srinath. That was well hit. Flower just picked that up beautifully, Richard. Well, he did. You need seven runs and over, so you're going to have to start playing a few shots. And that really is a typical left-handed chap, probably drag, dragging it round from outside the off stump. But it wasn't a bad delivery, but uh, the shot itself was more than useful. Just run. That's well played by Flower. Uh, 
So oh, coming back tight. to the 30, he's going to have to hurry or he does it. Ali Shah had a good look to see that Flower was going to make his ground, but he was a bit worried about it. Campbell right. had come belting around from third man. He had the ball back in a flash, and well, Flower decided to take it on. <laughs> he made a hash of that. I mean, he missed it for a yeah, start. Yeah, the throw, right? the throw. But even so, it wasn't a great throw. Well, it's very wet out there now, Peter. Very wet indeed, but uh, it has been sort of passing showers. It's been coming and going. At the moment, it's not very healthy. If they decide to play through it. Well, it won't be easy for the bowlers, that's for sure, let alone the fielders. And the batsmen could slip and slide out there. There's always the injury risk factor, of course. That's a lovely shot. Raju's around there, though. Well, he fielded that well. Released it very quickly. Got a little clap from Mohammad Azraddin. Well, there's an interesting situation out here. The two umpires have conferred as to whether playing conditions are, are right for playing. The batsmen, I think, have been given the option as to whether they want to stay on. And uh, Randall there having a talk to Azra Dean, and it looks as though they will be coming off. And that's bad news for India, and I'm sure that Azra Dean and the Indian side are very frustrated and disappointed with that decision. But at the end of the day, you can, cricket is a fine game. It's not a wet game. And... Of course, if they play on, then really it makes uh, or puts some Barbary into a situation whereby uh, they're at a complete disadvantage. I think they might go back, Richard, because well, it's not as bad now as it was when they talked about it between overs. No, uh, and that's probably a fair enough decision too. So this is what's happening out here. The weather, uh, very inconsistent, and they're going to continue. Much to the delight of the crowd, particularly the Indian contingent that's here today. Well, that must be a huge relief to Ezra Din. The ground staff are ready but they're back into the hutch with the covers for the moment. And it's exactly right too, because if they had come off, their chances of getting back out would be very slight with the way the weather's been hovering all day. So that's a hit over the top, which is going to bring up the Zimbabwe 50. He just clears Raju. And Shah going to 19, it's 51 for none. But that's Rodin, he'd want to get these overs in. Yes. Well, that's a good shot. Magnificent shot behind point. Oh, swung away. Good shot from the left-hander. And one bounce over there at square leg. Yes. Driving. Oh, good-looking shot. Long. Well, that was a good run, wasn't it? And a bit misfeeling. They should have gone quicker. That was bad cricket by the Zimbabweans. They didn't run the first two runs, I think, quick enough. They no, might have got a third, because there was a bit of misfielding. Oh, he's bowled. Tendulkar. Clean bowls, Ali Shah, going down the wicket, trying to get on with the job. Misses, and back go the stumps. So the first Zimbabwean wicket has gone. Ali Shah for 31. Yes, well, this was bound to happen. In fact, it just left the uh, left-hander a fraction. But uh, obviously, Zimbabwe have got to do all they can to get to this total of 204. And they've got to adopt desperate methods, and that's going to happen. Zimbabwe now is 79 for one. So Andy Flower on 32. And he's got oh. runs here. This might go for four. The neat tickle. It has it? gone for four. four. Yes, Srinath down there, unable to get round a long chase, just kept on going. So four or more runs to Zimbabwe. And of course, the great thing about this wetness is it does a slightly even it up because the ball must be like a cake of soap now. And sweeping in the air, but safe. And again, oh, it's beaten the fielder down there. <laughs> I love that. That's the first elementary question. You never go to the go square of a ball hit like that you want to go find if it's it, it spins that way how absolutely splendid yes uh, Cambly <laughs> down there and as you say it always kicks away doesn't it he took a bit of a <laughs> he took a bit of a cumbly didn't he going with the way he did oh dear and he took a bit of a tumbly so Andy Waller four and cracking it away behind point that'll go close to four but uh, has it no it hasn't no, he pouched that, the sliding tackle that has been made famous on these occasions. So Zimbabwe uh, keeping the score running along with uh, Andy Waller. He can hit the ball, a solid fellow. 
eight or four balls there. So good start for him. I well, wonder if this could be a game after all. Well, it is a game, but I wonder if it could be a, a really close one. It just could, you know. They're going well, and mm. it's not easy for the Indians fielding, bowling in this in these conditions. No, well, the ball will be very wet, won't it? So it'll be very difficult to hang on to. So they can really just try and bowl it down there. They can't do anything with it. And the Indians have got to think, well, we've got a place in the semi-final that we could make, therefore we don't want our main bowlers, Prabhaka and Kapildev, to pull muscles. No. So they've got a bit something to work out. I think India might well be a threat before the end of this tournament. They've had an unlucky start, but that's the end of the over, 94 for one. There we are, looking over Trustbank Park from a wee way away. Not much of a crowd in, it's been disappointing weather-wise, of course. I suppose uh, the question, Henry, is uh, whether we'll get a game in Auckland. I believe the weather's not too hot today, but tomorrow, the big, uh, the big game up there. No, but the temperature, it's, it's whether it rains or not is the problem, isn't it? Well, you are a smart fellow, aren't you? <laughs> I couldn't resist it, Mystery. You right. leave, leave yourself wide open on occasion. Thank you, Henry. It's lovely to have you along. Oh, trying to swing it away, but uh, they'll pick up a single anyway. Tell you what, he got out of that, it plopped into Lake Taupo, I think. He would have gone mm. a very long way indeed. Umpire Julius Bulchins from uh, Sri Lanka. Grant Nisbet tells me Lake, Lake Taupo is all the other way, so it would have had to have gone off the leading edge. Yes, you got that wrong, Henry. <laughs> oh, good ball. Beats the outside edge of Andy Flowers' bat. So, so are we now needing eight and over, so it's uh, slipping further and further away. But look, at the same stage, interestingly, mm. after 18 overs and three balls, Zimbabwe 96 for one, India 99 for three. Well, just goes to show, doesn't it? Doesn't it? But uh, Tendulkar got that message, didn't he, with the gloves that came out, and all of a sudden he changed tack altogether, and uh, bingo, the ball was hit to all corners of Trust Bank Park. And, of course, he's good enough to change... Um, to change the emphasis of his yes, batting. Yes, he went up uh, two or three gears. So one wonders if the Zimbabweans can do likewise. But that's a fine stroke. It's going away oh, for four God, runs, yes. too. Srinath won't get that, I don't think. Is oh, he has. Yes. No, is it rolled back? No, no, it's all right. It's just inside. <laughs> and it's, is that, I think that's Kappel down there. Kappel is it? Dead, I said Srinath, yes. I'm sorry. Mm. My apologies to them both. Well, that was very finely judged by Kappel, dear, because uh, it's just a matter of an inch. Or well, he knew that the, the outfield was wet there, you see, and he put the right spin on it with his boot. <laughs> Very cunning. Just stayed in, a bit of backspin. It's actually, it's raining again now, Henry, I see. Well, it is very dark, I mean, I, isn't it? I think the screen doesn't really tell the story with our lighting ability. <laughs> and oh, and that's going to be that. four runs. I don't think Kappel will get that. No, he won't. So there's the 100 for Zimbabwe, and uh, 103 for one. So there we are, 103 for one. Good effort by Zimbabwe. We've got a change in the commentary. Grant Nisbet and Glenn Turner. Thank you, John. Well, it's not all over yet, is it? Zimbabwe have got wickets in hand. And they've got some big hitters in the lineup for Glenn. So uh, if the weather holds, and that's doubtful, we could have a very good finish. Yep. Turned away by a flower. He's got to get one run. That was quite a long question I asked. I'm not sure what the answer was supposed to be. <laughs> yes, well, I just wanted to wait until the ball was delivered, actually. <laughs> However... I tell um, you what, it's absolutely pouring here, and I think they're going to leave the field. They are, but after after 19 overs, they needed to be 158. If they don't come out again, they needed to have got through to 158, which were the... Nine, uh, after 19 overs, they were the best 19, should I say, that uh, India put together, and so they're certainly well short of that. Well, it's a torrential rain coming down now. It really has. The skies have opened up. And this has been threatening all afternoon, really. And it's finally happened. And they're going to rush the covers on. But my word, there be, could be some damage done in the meantime. Because absolutely pouring. Just look at that.
Well, Zimbabwe were doing very well. They'd got through to 104 and there were only one wicket down. One ball into the 20th over when the rains came down and I'm afraid that was that. The match had to be abandoned. Look at the Indian bowling figures very quickly for you. Sachin Tendulkar, the only wicket taker of uh, the six overs he bowled. So this in effect became a 19 over match and the highest scoring overs for India added up to 158. And with just one ball bowled in the 20th over, then the 19 highest scoring overs for Zimbabwe came to 104.